Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Roddy McDowell, Preston Foster, and Rita Johnson in Thunderhead, Son of Flicker. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. In this turbulent, fast-changing era, the ways of man are often hard to understand. And equally so, the way of a man with a maid. But unchangeable is the way of a boy with his horse. Mutual sympathy and understanding. That loyal friendship is the basis of tonight's Lux Radio Theater play, Thunderhead, Son of Flicker, from the studios of 20th Century Fox, with the same stars who made that screen hit so endearing to American theater goers, Rita Johnson, Roddy McDowell, and Preston Foster. Three years ago, we introduced Flicker and her master to you in the play to which this drama is a sequel. Your many letters received since then, asking to hear Thunderhead, are answered now with a story that holds all the action and excitement, all the warmth and color of its predecessor. Our background is the mighty forests and prairies of the Northwest, which brings back to me many treasured memories of months spent in that unforgettably beautiful region filming God's Country and the Woman. Among those memories are the many remote logging camps where our location scenes led us. Simple, picturesque communities where life is rough, but the standard of cleanliness is high. And it was a common occurrence to see those stalwart woodsmen laundering their own clothes in long wooden troughs. I might add a common sight to see that friendly package of Lux Flakes beside them. A reminder to the fair sex in our audience that Lux Flakes are just as important in a man's world as a woman. We raise our curtain now on Act One of Thunderhead, Sun the Flicker, starring Roddy McDowell as Ken, Preston Foster as Rob, and Rita Johnson as Nell. It's a late spring afternoon, and above the lofty meadows of the Wyoming Rockies, ominous thunderheads reverberate between towering mountain peaks, still capped with snow. Below, in the far distance, is the Goose Bar Ranch, from whose sheltered confines a boy named Ken has gone in search of his horse. Dwarfed by the landscape and buffeted by the approaching storm, the boy struggles over rocky ledges in answer to a familiar sound. Oh, there you are. Hiding in a gully, huh? Horses are supposed to have horse sense. Don't you know there's a storm coming up? You should be home in the barn. And if you... I think of what's the matter. Come on, girl. Come on. Why, why in the... Why, Flicker, you've had your cold. You've got a baby horse. Oh, come... But it's white. Your coat's white. It can't be white. Oh, I'm sorry, Flicker. It's a beautiful cold. Honest, it is. Hello, baby. How do you feel, huh? Scared? Well, I- I'm not going to hurt you. I just got to get you out of here, though. Both of you, before the storm breaks. Come on, Flicker. Don't worry. He'll follow you. He's getting up. But please hurry, Flicker. Hurry or we'll never get home. Dad! Dad! Father and mother ain't home from down yet, Sam. Gosh, it's, it's happened. She's had a cold. Who has a cold? Flicker. Yeah? 
Oh, sure, it's, I, I mean, no, it isn't. She's down in the gully, Gus, and, and the coast got stuck in the wash. I can't get him out. Well, why didn't you say so? Come on. Gus, if we don't get there before the storm breaks... Nothing to worry about. They've been born in cold thunder rains a long time now. Listen. Yeah? Gus, that gully will be a river. Gus, hurry, the coast will drown. He's stuck there. He'll drown. <laughs> How is it, Gus? How's my cold? Morning, Kenny. Oh, it's over there. Morning. How are you, baby? How do you feel? The fella had a pretty hard night. Oh, he's beautiful, isn't he, Gus? Looks like a horse. I'm going to train him, Gus. I'm going to run him myself. He's a racehorse. Oh? You think the little fella can run, eh? Sure he can run. He's going to be the greatest racehorse in the world. That's nice. You've got it all figured out. Well, I hope you're right. We can use the little good luck around here, I bet you. Oh, that sounds like my healthy... What is it, Hildy? You want to just come in for breakfast right this minute. Thanks, Hildy. Oh, you're welcome. Gus, sir. You, you didn't tell Dad about the cold. Why, no, Kenny. You said not to tell him that. Well, why don't you want anybody to know? Well, because... Well, he's a very special cold, and I want to surprise Dad. Oh. Well, I won't tell him, Ken. Oh, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, say, there's your pop now, Ken. Are you going to surprise him now? No, and, and gee whiz, Hildy, can't you ever mind your own business? Well, I guess so. But it isn't much fun. Hello, Dad. Morning, young fella. Going into breakfast? Yes, sir. Oh, Dad, um, what would you do if you had all the money you wanted? <laughs> all the money I wanted? Well, I guess I'd buy your mother a fur coat, a diamond ring, and take a cruise to South America and see what kind of horses they really raise down there. Then what would you do? You mean there's some left? Oh, sure. Well, if you really want to know, I'd buy some more brood mares. Make this just about the best ranch in the West. Hey, what's this all about? Well, I have an idea that's going to make us a lot of money, Dad. You have, huh? Well, that's fine. Well, now, it may take a couple of years, but... Oh. Well, that's Charlie Sargent. Charlie, how are you? Morning, Rob. What's your visitor? Who is it, Dad? Looks like Major Harris. Hello, Kenny. Morning, Mr. Sargent. Major Harris. Glad to see you again. Thanks. I'm on another buying tour, McLaughlin. Hello, young man. Hello. Well, uh, let's get on in the house. How's the road? Uh, storm too much damage? Only got stuck once. Well, good morning. Hello, Nell. Major Harris, what are you doing Hello. out here in the wilderness? Oh, just wondering if your husband has any more horses to sell. Afraid not, Major. You got the cream of the crop last time. We were just going to have breakfast. Won't you join us? Wouldn't think of it. Not much, he wouldn't. He can smell home cooking 20 miles away. <laughs> <laughs> You're not kidding. Well, come on, it's all ready. Watch out, Ken. Oh, we'll need an extra chair. I'll be right with you, more to sell us, McLaughlin. Those horses you sold us last year were the talk of the fort. They should have been. Who ever heard of selling hunters and polo ponies for 200 bucks a head? Well, that's standard army prices. Well, I wouldn't have taken a loss like that. You're just sore because those would-be races of yours aren't good enough for the army. Not good enough? What about Appalachian? Oh, Charlie, not Appalachian again. And why not? Sixty generations of race horses behind him and every one of his colts is a winner. Can I help it if my stallion's the best in the country? Better than the albino? The albino? Who'd he belong to? Nobody. Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh, that's all right, son. No, Major, nobody owned the albino. He drifted over here from Montana and nearly drove the ranchers crazy. He was wild. Never could run him down. Every summer for six years, he came out of the hills and raided our herds. He could drive off as many mares as he could, and only the best. Any stallion that tried to stop him was in for a battle. He killed several of the finest horses in this country. Yes, sir, a robber baron if there ever was one. Cost us ranchers thousands of dollars. And what became of him? Nobody knows. Just disappeared four years ago. Sounds more like a legend than a real horse. Oh, he was real enough. Oh, yes, Major. My mare Flicker is his daughter. May, may I come in, Miss McLaughlin? Of course, Hildy. Here are the eggs you wanted, Miss McLaughlin. Thank you, dear. Oh, you're welcome. Here, I'll take them. Ken, do they know about the surprise yet? Hildy, I told you. But I didn't say a word about the cold. Cold? What cold? Well, Dad, uh... Well, Flick has had a fall. Oh, Ken, that's wonderful. It's down in the barn. Well, uh, let's go see it. Come along, Major. I'll show you a cold even Charlie here to be proud of. Well, Dad, here he is. Flick is cold, this? Yes, Dad. Ah, that's ridiculous. He's white. <laughs> What's the matter, Rob? I thought you said your stallion banner sired this cold. 
Dan has always fired two before. A white coat. But there's nothing wrong with a white coat, Dad. He's just as good as any other. Of course he is. Watch it, Ken. He's breaking. <laughs> Stop. Watch <laughs> Daddy. He's running away. Come back, Lou. Come back. Don't worry. I got you. Look at him, Ken. He's a goblin. He looks just like a goblin. You keep out of this. Mr. McGuire. Ken, let him be alone. Well, he's not a goblin. He's a thoroughbred racehorse. Racehorse? By Banner. Out of Flicker. No, son. It takes a racer to sire a racer. He was sired by a racer, Mr. Sergeant. Huh? You mean that Banner's not his father? No, sir, he isn't. Well, then who is? Uh, Appalachian. Appalachian? What? That jug-headed coach by my Appalachian? Honest, Mr. Sergeant. Now whose horse doesn't sire too? Ken, what's this all about? Well, Mom, you know I've always wanted a race, and... Well, Mr. Sergeant said what a wonderful horse Appalachian was, so... Well, I took Flicker over to his ranch and you I... You what? Yes, sir. Uh, don't you know what it costs to have a colt sired by a famous stallion? Well, Dad, I, I was figuring to pay Mr. Sergeant out of my winnings. He says Appalachian's colts always win and I... I guess he's got <laughs> you there, Charlie. Ah, oh, me and my big mouth. Okay, son, you don't owe me a cent. What's more, I'll give you a certificate. Oh, gosh, thanks, Mr. Sergeant. But how come that coat pure white when my stallion's coal black? Maybe he takes out his grandfather. The albino? Yeah, that's it. He's a throwback to the albino. You know what that means, Kent. Huh? It means that if he inherits any of the trace of that wild devil, you'll never make anything out of him. It just can't be done. Yes, Dad, I... I understand. Well, Ken, there they are. Our whole herd. Yes, sir. You know, boy, if I were a horse, something inside me said this was the season to head for those mountains up there. Well, I couldn't ask for a finer day. And if I was a horse, Dad, I, I guess I wouldn't want anybody to leave me but Banner there. Look at him, Dad, rounding him up just as if he was a cowboy. Sure, Banner knows he's got a job to do, and he's all for doing it. That's it, Banner. Get them together, boy. Take good care of the herd now. Understand? Dad, look, there they go. Goodbye, Banner. Goodbye. But it seems strange around here, those empty corrals. I still got Flicker and Goblin. And I still think they're places with the herd. But, Dad, you, you said I could keep them. They're your horses. You do what you want. Yes. Hello, Flicker. What's the matter, girl? I know you hear Ban on the herd running off to the mountains, don't you? You want to go, too. All right, girl, you can go. See them out there, Flicker? Running and dancing and... Go on, Flicker, go catch Banner. Hey, what's the matter with you, Goblin? Aren't you going with your mama? Go on, beat it. Now, look, Goblin, you may be a horse, but you sure act like a mule sometimes. Now, get out of here. Go on. That's it, Goblin. Go with your mama. So long, Flicker. Goodbye, Goblin. See you next spring. Yeah, we'll see them all next spring. Oh, Dad... That was nice of you, Ken. Letting Flick and the cold go. Well, I I guess I don't exactly need him. And that goblin's tough. He'll get along. But he isn't like other colts. I'll say he isn't. All the colts I've ever seen act like they're tied to their mothers. But that young fella, he'll want to investigate everything for himself. Won't make any difference whether it's a coyote or a rattler. When the storms come down from the hills and the herd takes shelter, that little fool horse will want to stick his nose right into the wind and fight back. But old Banner won't stand for any nonsense. Goblin may be the grandson of the great albino, but the banner is just another nuisance of a colt. Well, son, I wonder what he'll look like in the spring. Oh, he'll be beautiful, Dad. Just you wait and see. I I only wish that... What? When I only wish spring wasn't so far off. Look at him run. Run, White Wife. He's practically flying. What's that you got? What kind of 
Who watches that? Stop watching. Where'd you get it? Oh, don't bother me now, Hildy. I'm pounding goblins. Oh. Hey, look. Fine, boss. Fine. Yeah, get on those gates, Gus. Hey, Ken. Coming. Well, son, what do you think of your horse now? Oh, he's great, Dad. Say, how far is it to the top of that knoll? Oh, a couple of hundred yards. Oh, that's wonderful. Why, why he made it in almost nothing flat. Look, 15 seconds. What a racehorse. <laughs> In 15 seconds, Mom. 15 That's seconds. That's fine, Ken. Now eat your lunch. And, Mom, Dad put Goblin in the corral all by himself. That means I can... Excuse us boss. Yeah, Gus. Boss, we're missing three mares. Taggart, Sky High, and Brownie. They ain't with the herd. Oh, Rob, our prize mare. Maybe the wolves got them. I'll bet it was cougars. Oh, you here, too. If it was, he would have found signs. Then what could have happened to them? Oh, they probably just strayed. We'll find them tomorrow. No, boss. Him and me looked everywhere. You sure? Yeah, boss. Well, I guess that settles it. Yep, that settles it. Thanks, Gus. Come on, Hilda. Oh, Rob, the herd's so small now, we can't afford to lose those mares. Well, we just have to buy some others. They're so expensive. They send schooling and Gus and Tim to pay and the tax. Well, uh, we'll have to figure it out some way. I don't start to worry, honey. We'll find a way. I haven't got time to explain. You're going to try to put a rope around Goblin, aren't you? Look, if you've got to sit on the corral fence, I guess there's nothing I can do about it. But don't bother me. Oh, I won't, Kenny. I'll just look. Okay, Goblin, you can quit your fooling now. The way things are going on around here, it's about time you and I got down to some business. That's a boy. Smell the rope. See? It, it won't hurt you. Now, I'll just put it around you. Hey! Hey, come back here, Goblin, on you. All right, run. I can run, too. Not as fast as he can. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Go on, run. I'll lasso you. You won't like that, but I'll have to do it. I'll bet you did. See, I knew you'd miss. Get out of here, Hilda. You want to get yourself killed? Oh, that's your head. Do as I tell you. See, you miss him again. Well, I won't miss him this time. There. What I... Hey, Kenny, look out. Hold, Goblin. Hold. Kenny, he's wearing. Get down. It's hot, Kenny. Stop, Tonya. Hold. Kenny, get up. I'm trying to get up. There's Just a little more time, Dad. Just take it easy, Goblin. I'll be around to see you tomorrow, boy. We got work to do, son. Lots of work. Morning, Kenny. Can't I ever do something without you having you tagging along? That's a holder you've got, huh? Gonna put a holder on Goblin, huh? That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Hello, Goblin. Here, boy, look. It's sugar. Good, isn't it? Yes, sir. You and I are just gonna get along fine. Ha, uh ha. -huh. And if you'll listen to reason why, well, you'll be a racehorse before you even know it. Now, this is only a halter, Goblin. It won't hurt you. It's only a halter. Oh, now, now, don't tell me we have to go through all this foolishness again. Now, you know who's boss around here, so behave yourself. Ho, oh, doggone you, ho, oh, cut it out. Want me to take this horse shank to you? Now, Goblin, I'm trying to be taken... Ho, oh, stop it, you crazy bro. Come back here. Come back. Well, you're right about one thing, Kenny. He sure can run. Okay. Okay. Let him be like his grandfather. See if I care. Of all the mean-tempered, stubborn idiots I've ever... Losing your temper is no way to train a horse, son. I'm not going to train him, Dad. You started this thing, and you're going to see it through. I can't teach Goblin anything, Dad. What's more, I... I think he hates me. 
He hated you. He'd never let you step inside that corral. No horse is going to be broken without putting up a scrap. I know, Dad, but... Well, one minute, Goblin's as gentle as a kitten, and, and then just when I think I'm getting somewhere, he turns out law. That's because Goblin has a problem, too. He can't make up his mind whether he wants to be like Flicker or like the albino. Fighting himself, like most of us do. What he needs is a little patience and understanding. Now, go and find that horse and bring him back. Yes, sir. The herd's on the upper pasture. Ten to one, that's where they'll be. I'll find him, Dad. Flicker and I. We'll bring him back. Been back an hour ago. Oh, stop worrying now. Chances are Goblin took off into the hills. Well, I don't think we should let Ken go on with this. Goblin's too wild. Ken will handle him. He broke Flicker, didn't he? Goblin isn't like Flicker. This is no time to discourage him, just when the boy's beginning to take an interest in the ranch. Besides, we want to send him off to military school, don't we? I don't know what that's got to do with it. Breaking Goblin's very apt to make a man out of him. He'll need to be a man when he. Now, wait a minute. That you, Ken? Dad, Dad. In here. Dad, the albino's come back. What? He's waiting the hood. The albino? Well, it couldn't be. The albino hasn't been around here in years. That's true, Dad. I saw him. He was running like the wind, fighting Banner and singling out the mares. Well, and... that's what happened to our mares. Banner's all cut up, Dad. I, I didn't know what to do. I... Get Gus and Tim. Tell them to saddle up and bring their rifles. You mean... You mean we're going after the albino tonight? That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> Our stars, Preston Foster, Roddy McDowell, and Rita Johnson, will return in a moment with Act Two of Thunderhead, Son of Flicker. Tell me, Libby, is it true that most movie stars have pet superstitions? Oh, yes, indeed. Very special ones, and often. Now, there's Maureen O'Hara, 20th Century Fox's auburn-haired beauty. She insists she lost an important role because she looked at a new moon out of a window. Judging by the great part she has as a Broadway actress in Sentimental Journey, it didn't hurt her screen career. She has another amusing superstition. She wears a pet slip when she starts a new picture. She bought it for a gift several years ago, but liked it so much she kept it herself. Several years ago? A and she's still wearing it? Oh, yes, and it's lovely. I saw it when she was being fitted for those stunning, curvaceous clothes she wears in Sentimental Journey. Takes good care of that slip. Says it brings her luck. And it always gets Lux care, Mr. Kennedy. Any slip is lucky that gets Lux care. Remember those famous lingerie tests we've talked about, Libby? Slips and nightgowns washed with strong soap, hot water, and handled roughly soon looked faded and drab. But identical underthings washed the Lux way stayed lovely three times as long. And that's important these days, Mr. Kennedy. You know, it's hard to find pretty undies in the stores. So we girls are being thrifty. We're just insisting on Lux care. And if you don't find Lux in the store, ask for it again. It's certainly worth waiting for. Another way I found to be thrifty, Mr. Kennedy, is this. After I Lux my undies, I use the same suds for stockings. Lux makes such rich suds, a little goes a long way. A good suggestion. These days, nobody should ever waste soap. Back now to Mr. William Keeley. We continue with Thunderhead, Son of Flicker. Starring Rita Johnson as Nell, Preston Foster as Rob, and Roddy McDowell as Ken. Our curtain rises on Act Two. All night long, under a bright moon, an unsuccessful search for the wild albino horse continues. Through canyons and up to the timberline, across swollen streams, and finally, to the edge of a vast range called the Buckhorn. He came this way, all right. Look at those tracks, Tim. These two, boss. That albino took plenty of company with him. That's fine. More of our mares. Dad, look. Goblin's gone with the albino. Goblin? Sure, here are his tracks. I, I told you how I knocked his hoof. I recognize you. That fool goblin get near the mare, and the albino will cut him to pieces. Ah, uh, wait. There's no sense going any further. Yeah, he's taking him clear into Buckhorn Range. But, Daddy, he just can't disappear off the face of the earth. There's a million canyons in Buckhorn. It would take us weeks. Ah, uh, we're going back home. Hey, down there, look. Dad. Well, I'll be... It's goblin, Daddy. He didn't run away. It's goblin. Hey, take it easy. I'm coming, goblin. Wait for me. I'm coming. Uh, what do you think of that? 
Sure, his goblin. Hello, boy. Gosh, I'm glad to see you. Dad, look, he's hurt. Look at his fangs. Jimmy, all cut up. By a hoof. And a mighty big one. The albino. But, but goblin will be all right, won't he, Dad? It, it won't keep him from running. I don't know. He's pretty badly shaken up. My guess he's going to be all right, though. Oh, gosh. Put a rope around him, Tim. We'll take it easy going back. Yes, boy. Then, uh... You're pretty determined to run, Goblin, aren't you? Yes, sir. You'll be going away to school soon. But, well, well, he won't be ready to run for a long time yet. Another year, anyway. Uh, you've got lots to learn, the two of you. And I, I guess we don't have much money, do we? Been taking quite a licking, son. It's all your mother and I can do to get you into the academy. I know. And there's just not enough money for both. Keep you in school and spend what it takes to turn a jug-headed colt into a racehorse. Well, Dad, I, I'll do whatever you want. Thanks, Ken. You know? Yes, sir? Next year, just about this time, you'll be coming home for spring vacation. Yes, sir? And just about this time next year, Goblin here should be ready for a serious workout on a racetrack. Oh, Dad, Dad, thanks. <laughs> I don't know how we'll manage it, son, but, uh, well, we'll manage. <laughs> Looks great, Rob. So does the boy, too. Uh, it's great to have him home again, Charlie. And how he's looked forward to this day. Oh, it's wonderful of you, Charlie, letting him use the track. Oh, I'm as interested in that horse as he is now. Well, this is as good a place as any to watch him work out. Take him around once, son. We'll clock him. Okay, Charlie. Who's that other horse down there? Southern Bell. Rob and I figure Goblin needs a pacemaker. Goblin needs more than a pacemaker. Still too factious? Well, look at him, see? See what I mean? Rearing and jumping oh, and... Oh, Rob, he's still a cold. Oh, he's too unpredictable. Ken says he's just high-spirited. Hildy, you here? I didn't know that you... Oh, yes, I'm here. We're all set, Ken. Break together now. I wouldn't miss this for anything, Mr. McLaughlin. When I drop this handkerchief, go. Southern Bell can run. If Goblin can catch her, we'll know he's good. All right. Here we go. Run, Goblin, run. Ken! Oh, for Pete's sake, look at him standing there. Uh-oh, left at the post. No, he's going now. And look at him go. Run, you goblin, run! Whose horse are you for? I'm for any cold of Appalachians. He's catching up. He's catching up. Come on, goblin. Ride him, Kenny, ride him. Come on, Ken. Let him out, boy. Let him out. Goblin, goblin, goblin. Here they come. Look at him pull away. Eight lengths. He's beaten Bell by eight lengths. A stopwatch. You got the stopwatch? I've got it all right. Whoop! Hey! What'd he make, Charlie? What'd he make? Look at the watch. A half mile and 47. Half mile and 47 seconds. He did it, Kenny. He did it. Well, I'll be jiggered. Could run, Mr. Sergeant. Ken, you did beautifully. Sonny, you're going to enter Goblin in the Multnomah County races. But, well, that's not till next May. You want to win that race, don't you? We'll wait for the Multnomah. Okay, Mr. Sergeant. And I'll help you get a jockey license so you can ride him yourself. Ken, a jockey? Oh, sure, Ma. Oh, dear. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. I think we're all a little too excited now. Let's get down to earth. First place, we know we can't depend on Goblin. He's proved that for one whole year. But you just saw him run. Being able to run isn't enough. He's got to run when you want him to, not just when he feels like it. Oh, he'll be all right, Dad. I'll train him. I'll make a real racer out of him. Well, I'm feeling confident and confident. Goblin's a racer. Goblin? No, let's not call him that. He isn't a goblin anymore. He needs a new name. You name him, Mom. Oh, Ken, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. Well, now, uh, let's see. Uh, we could... Rob, look at the sky. Yeah, rain again by evening. Well, Sunday, Ned. They're like white horses in the sky. Well, my goodness, that's it. How about calling him Thunder? Oh, I like that. That's a fine name for him. Thunderhead. Yes, Thunderhead. Ken, I swear every time you come back from school, you've grown another foot. You mean even more than last time? Well, look. The last time you were home, by the very day we named Thunderhead, I made you for this jockey shirt. And look at you. You can scarcely get into it. Oh, it looks great, Mom, on it. <laughs> well, I suppose I can lengthen the sleeve. Ken, I want you to promise me one thing. Sure. I want you to promise not to take any foolish chances in that race. You're not a professional jockey, you know. I can ride, Mom. You know that. Oh, I know. But you will be careful. Thank you. 
sure, but... But what about Dad? The Dad? Oh, he's been working awfully hard lately, Jim. We've just about been able to get by, you know that. Yes, Mom, I know. He's been pretty nervous and irritable. I've been letting him have his own way in everything. But, Mom, if, if we let him have his own way about the race... Now, you let me worry about that. Just get out to the report. When Dad comes home, I'll talk to you. Hello, darling. Sorry I'm late. Tired, dear. Oh, little. How'd the sale go? Well, I changed my mind about keeping my thoroughbred. I spoke to Sir Harris. He bought the whole lot. Here's the check. Oh, Rob, they're all gone? That's all right. All I've I'm sorry, dear. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. Nobody's interested in jumpers and hunters these days. We'll be able to concentrate now on cavalry horses. There's nothing wrong in that. And take a look at that check. It's enough to last us the rest of the year. We might even be able to buy a couple of good broodmares. Rob, that's uh, wonderful, but do we have to buy them right away? Well, we ought to. Why not? Oh, nothing. Come on now. Out with it. Hello, Dad. Well, Ken, when did you get here? This morning. I, I couldn't wait. I took the bus. Well, you look fine, boy. Say, that's uh, some snappy uniform. And stripes. You got your stripes. Yes, sir. Academy Corporal. Yes, Dad, and, and that's not all. Here. Oh, report card. Well, look at it. Mathematics, uh, 94. Latin, 92. <laughs> Composition, 100. Now aren't you proud? Proud? I'm dumbfounded. Ken, this is wonderful. <laughs> what happened? Well, <laughs> well, Dad, I... Go on, dear. You might as well tell him yourself now. Well, Dad, I... Well, I thought if I made good in school, well, well, you might lend me the money to enter Thunderhead in the Multnomah County races. Races? Nell, I thought you wrote Ken But, Dad, I... I... Ken, it isn't just the entry fee. It's that horse. You can't depend on him. But, Dad, I've had him out all day, and he's fine now. And he might win. He will win. I know he'll and win. And if he does, it'll mean $5,000. Nell, I'd like to see that horse run as much as anybody. But with incidentals and everything, it would cost close to $500 to get him entered. The way things are, I, I just can't afford to take the risk. But, Dad... I'm sorry, son. Oh, Rob, he's been counting on it. He's worked so hard. Now, wait a minute. Would somebody please tell me what this is? That? Oh, it's just a jockey shirt. Jockey shirt? I made it for him. And, uh, what's this thing? The, uh, design sewed on it. Oh, just our brand, Rob. The goose bar. I thought Kim might like it. Oh. And uh, that jar, what's that? Uh... Furnace marble hoof luster, Dad. I I bought it to shine Thunderhead's hooves with. Hoof luster. Jockey shirt. What chance do I stand around here? Okay, you win. Thunderhead enters the race. Oh, oh gee, Dad. Now, just let me out of here before I change my mind. Well, Dad. I... Well, son? Thunderhead looks pretty good, doesn't it? You don't look so bad yourself. Checked everything? Everything. I don't want you doing a nosedive in the middle of the track. Oh, I'll be all right. Sure you will. Be just like a workout at Charlie Sargent's ranch. Six race, jockey's up. Six uh, race, jockey's up. I guess that means me. Yep. Jockey's up. Let's go, Thunder. Ken, don't let that crowd bother you or the jockeys either. And don't let them get you in a pocket. I won't, Dad. Just remember, there's not a better horse on that track or a better rider. Thanks. Good luck, son. Your mother and I will be cheering for you. The horses are now approaching the starting gate. This is the victory handicap for three-year-olds and upwards. On the way of the speedway with Buddy Farnsworth. Number two is Molly R. with Jackie Connolly. Happy Days is number three, written by Clyde Jennings. Number four is Thunderhead, written and owned by Ken McLaughlin. There he is! There's Ken! You, Ken! Well, Mrs. McLaughlin, what do you think of your son now? Oh, Rob, he looks so small down there. There's no time to start worrying. He can take care of himself. And that's Thunderhead, Rob. He looks like a million. I'll settle right now for 5000 Who owns that black one, Charlie? That's Fleetway, the Johnson stable. Yeah, and he's liable to be a good horse. Not as good as Thunderhead, I bet. Only the favorite, darling. And what are we? Just 30 to 1. Is that good? Well, he'll be, I'll let you know in about five minutes. The horses are all in the starting gate. Number four is acting up down there. Thunderhead is refusing to enter. He's trying to break out. No, no, wait, wait. Well, they've got him all right. He's settling down now. Thunderhead is being led into position. They're all in there now. And there they go. Thunderhead is used to break. He's still in the stage. He's jumping and bucking. He's so there he goes. It's Molly out in front. Cut it back for you. Second by one thing. Swinging down his third. Happy Days is fourth and the Fleetway. 
Thunderhead is trailing the field by 20 lengths. Around the first turn is Molly R in front by a hit. Wings oh, boss. Dead last. He is dead last. Uh, 20 lengths. All because he wouldn't break. 20 lengths, nothing. That horse is moving up. Kenny, don't be last. Not last. Come Kenny. on, Thunderhead. Come on. He is moving. Where are those last? One by half a length. Swinging Dora is second by a hit. Molly Art is third by one length. Stepmother is fourth. And on the extreme outside is Thunderhead. The horses are all closing round. Into the stretch, it's Fleetway ahead by one length. Molly R between horses is second by a half a length. Wings over in third and Thunderhead. It's Fleetway in front, Thunderhead is second. The head and head now, Thunderhead is taking the lead. Fleetway is second by two lengths and the Molly R. It's Thunderhead by two lengths and drawing away. Fleetway is second and... Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Buckley, time for the Thunderhead. He's slowing down, the field is going past him. It's Fleetway going across the line of finish and... Thunderhead is leaping the rail into the infield. He's running away. It's Fleetway the winner. Maliari second by three lengths and swinging Dahl third in front of Stepmother. Thunderhead is still running across the infield. The lead ponies are attempting to head him off now. Uh-oh. He's fallen. Thunderhead has fallen. The jockey's on the ground. And up moving. Looks like a serious accident. It's difficult to tell from here. But... Oh! McLaughlin is getting up. Stay here, darling. Wait for me here. You good for nothing, loco Cayuse. Why did you do it? Why did you throw that race, Thunderhead? I, oh, I told you we were counting on you, and, and now you've ruined everything. Ah, stop it! I, I don't care if you are sorry. The last of that, that whole grandstand. Come on, let's get out of here. I said, let, Thunderhead, your leg. What's the matter with your leg, boy? Thunderhead. Head. Ted, are you all right? Dad, I'm fine, but it's him. Thunder hit his leg. Well, Doc, can't you tell us anything? Well, it's hard to say, McLaughlin. Swollen like it is. Just keep that leg bandaged till you get the horse home. Then have your own vet look at him. Thanks, Doc. He, he's going to run again, isn't he, Doc? Doesn't look like it, son. Old tendons can never be depended upon. At least it won't cripple him, Ken. Why, he'll be as good as ever, son. He'll make a great saddle horse. Perhaps. But he'll never be able to put on that burst of speed a racehorse needs to take him over the finish line. You see, Kenny, Thunderhead's racing days are over. Thunderhead, it... it's all right. It's all right, boy. Pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. back with Act Three of Thunderhead in just a moment. Thousands of people contribute in many different ways to your enjoyment of motion pictures, from the stars and the producers to the usherette who shows you to your theater seat. Tonight we have as our guest 18-year-old Gloria Tucker, petite blonde usherette at Hollywood's famous Egyptian theater. Have you any screen ambitions, Gloria? Yes, I have, Mr. Keeley. My job helps pay for my dramatic lessons. Hmm, and gives you a chance to study the acting technique of our leading stars, eh? <laughs> yes, that's true. When we're playing a picture like Metro Golden Mare's Adventure, I, I find it hard to keep my eyes on the seats instead of on the screen. Well, Clark Gable and Greer Garson certainly make a wonderful team. You know, it was Mr. Gable who started me dreaming about a screen career. Hmm, when was that? Twelve years ago. My parents were making a tour of the Metro Golden Mare studios, and we met Mr. Gable in the commissary. And Clark offered you a role at the age of six? <laughs> oh, no. But he told me what a wonderful career the movies are. And he's right. And from the crowds I've seen, everybody wants to see Gable's first picture since his return to the screen. Oh, adventure certainly keeps us busy. It seems as if I walk up and down those aisles a thousand times a day. I imagine that's tough on stockings, Gloria. <laughs> yes, it is, Mr. Kennedy. But I hardly ever get runs. Maybe that's because I use luck. 
Every night when I get home, I toss my stockings into lukewarm Lux suds. It's not surprising, Gloria, that you get such good care. Stockings washed with Lux flakes last twice as long as those rubbed with cake soap or washed with a strong soap. Scientific strain tests prove it. What do you do in your spare time, Gloria? I don't have very much, Mr. Keeley, but I like sports and go bowling whenever I can. Well, what's your average? <laughs> not very good. My stocking average is better. Do you know why Lux Care gives you that high score, Gloria? It's because Lux saves stocking elasticity, spreads stretch on the strain, then spring back into place without popping into run. I never knew the scientific reason, Mr. Kennedy, but I certainly know that Lux is good for stocking. Thank you for telling us your experience, Gloria, and thank you for coming here tonight. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. We hope you'll join us after the play to hear about Roddy McDowell's latest rather fascinating hobby. Here's Roddy now as Ken, co-starred with Preston Foster as Rob and Rita Johnson as Nell in Act Three of Thunderhead, Son of Flicker. A couple of weeks have passed since Thunderhead's disastrous race. His leg is almost well, but the big half-wild horse will never race again. In front of the corral, Rob, his face lined with worry, talks with a hired man, Gus. Well, Gus? Oh, he's coming along good now, boss. Double a week, he be like new. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Um, Gus, I was speaking to Charlie Sergeant. Yeah? He tells me he's got quite a lot of work at his place. He's short-handed and he, uh, what's the matter? Oh, this corral gate, the sack... Hell, this been swinging again, I bet you. You know, uh, things have been pretty slack around here. He got the gate all loose. Mr. Sergeant tells me he could use a couple of good hands. Yeah. He's hanging, he's taking up, too. Will you hold her up just a minute, boss? That's it. Well, I, uh, I thought you and Tim might like to go to work for him. A uh, little higher, boss. That's it. Yeah. With the herd as small as it is, I can uh, pretty well handle it myself. Now, I, uh, besides, I... Well, I, I just can't afford to pay after the first of the month, Gus. Well, the hanger all fixed now. Yeah, I think that's better, huh? You didn't hear a word I said. Sure, boss. You said you couldn't pay us after the first of the month. Well? It don't make no difference. Jim and me wouldn't be happy anyplace else. Yeah, the gate works pretty well now. Thanks, Gus. Coming. Where's Ken? Upstairs. He said he wasn't very hungry this morning. I think I'd better have a little talk with him. Rob, be nice to him. He goes back to school Monday and, well, he's been taking it pretty hard. I know. I'll, uh, I'll be down in a few minutes. Come on, son, hurry up. Big day ahead of us. Got to get the hay in. Bringing $40 a ton this season and, uh, Ken. Yes, sir. I know what's on your mind, but, well, we took a chance and we lost. That's all there is to it. I'd counted so on Thunderhead winning that race. I know. Now he won't ever run again. And it's all part of growing up. Losing races of one kind or another. You know, there's lots of ways you can grow up. You can grow up to be cocky if you get what you want, and bitter if you don't. You can also grow up to take both success and failure in your stride. That's what I want you to do, son. What happens isn't important. What is important is the way you meet it, how much courage you have. You see, it takes a mighty big man to pick up the pieces and start all over again. I'm sorry, Dad. I I guess I have been acting kind of like a baby. Now, what do you say we have a little breakfast, huh? That's for me. You know, uh, now that his leg's better, Thunderhead's getting kind of restless out there. Well, you know he wants to get out. He, he can't stand being shut up in a corral that way. Maybe I can ride him later. Sure, he could stand some exercise. Oh, can you come down? Tim's here. Coming. Boss, as if we hadn't had enough bad luck. Now what? The albino's great at us Boss? again. Banner's hurt pretty bad. Banner? Oh, Rob. Get the medicine kit, Kenny. We'll have to skip breakfast, Nell. Get Gus and the rifles, Tim. We'll try to find that robber again. <laughs> Dad, 
man has been too good to me. Can't let him suffer like this. Go back to your horse, Ken. Yes, sir. Let me have the pistol, Gus. Yeah, boss. The best stallion I ever owned. Poor old Banner. Yeah. One thing, boss. If poor Banner got it so bad, that albino's as good as dead, too, I bet you. It must have been some fight they had. Yeah. Well, let's try that trail. We may still run him down. How's Thunderhead's leg holding out, Ken? Looks fine to me, Dad. Ready to go all day. Well, he may have to, because I'm finding that murdering albino. Getting dark, boss. You and the boy turn around now, you could still make the ranch. No, it won't worry. She knows what we're after. Gus and I stick right after him, boss. We're all sticking. We'll make camp at the lake. We'll get some sleep and see what sort of a moon we get. If it's bright, we can start out again after midnight. Good, boss, good. They give that white devil no rest, you bet. Dad? Did you call me? Dad? I thought I heard a noise. Oh, see, they're all asleep. I must have been dreaming. I guess. Thunderhead. He's gone. He clipped his tether. Thunderhead. But where would you go, boss? You're Tim and the horse. That's all right, Gus. Look, Penny left a note. See. Thunderhead got away, didn't want to wake you, so I'm going out after him myself. Don't worry, I'll be back. Yeah, but when? Boss, you think he's all right? Oh, he can take care of himself. Go on back to sleep, Gus. We'll stay here till daylight. He'll be back by then. Thunderhead? Thunderhead? All right. Don't answer me, you stubborn fool. I'll show you I can be stubborn, too. I've chased you all night long. I've climbed my last mountain after you. Just wait till I get to the top of you. Just wait. You're not there. I'm going back. Daylight seeing. I'll just get one good look and then I'm... Oh... Oh, what a view. A whole valley. Why, I never knew there was a valley here. I... Thunderhead? A herd. A herd of horses down there. Dad's horses. Why, look, there's... There's Brownie and... And Sky High and... And Taggart. Dad's mares. And it's... It's him. The albino. The albino. I'm getting those men. Albino or no albino. I'm getting those men. Brownie. Brownie, come here. You you know me, Brownie. Don't you want to go home, Brownie? I... The albino. He's coming after me. Thunderhead! Help! Thunderhead! I can't run anymore! Get him, Thunderhead! I can't! Get him, Thunderhead! Get him, boy! His hug! Watch his hug, Thunderhead! Get up and fight! Get up and fight! There! You've got him, boy! There! You've got him! He's fighting, Thunderhead! That! He's fighting, boy! He's fighting! Ken, are you all right? Dad! Ken, we've been looking for you for hours. What's happened, boy? What have you been... The albino... Yes, Dad. And Thunderhead. He killed the albino, Dad. Thunderhead killed him. He saved my life. Killed the albino. Easy, boy. Easy. 
You don't have to fight anymore. It's all over now. Boss! Boss, look! Down there, the end of the canyon. There are horses. A whole herd. And there are our mares. That's where he kept them, Dad, the albino. When I found him, he, he started to charge me. I I was so tired that I, I couldn't run anymore. And then I fell, and, and then he saw me. Thunderhead. He headed him off, and he, and he fought for me, Dad, until he killed the albino. Thunderhead. Yes, yes, yes. He was a thief and a killer, that albino. But still, he... He was a great horse, wasn't he? Mm. One of the greatest. Thunderhead! You see, boy? He's all right. Look at him run. He's calling that herd together down there. They're coming this way. He's driving the herd, boss. Rounding them up. You better get up on my horse, Ken. Dad, he's bringing them to us. Why? He wants to take the herd home. Well, I'll be... Me too, boss. He lives. Let's help him do it. Ken. And Thunderhead, Mom. And Thunderhead. He saved my life, Mom. He, he killed the albino. Oh, that means more than if he'd won a hundred races. Come to think of it, I... I guess it does. Dad? Dad, can you come here, please? Just a second, Kenny. Oh, boy, easy, easy. What's wrong, Thunderhead? What is it, boy? Well, Ken? Dad, Dad, what's wrong with him? He, he acts as if I was a stranger to him. Oh, uh, it isn't that, Ken. Thunderhead brought the mares here because this has been his home. But it's still his home. But don't forget, son. Thunderhead has taken the albino throne away from him. He's king now, and he knows it. I'm afraid that neither corrals nor fences, no matter how big, ever hold him again. Oh, Sonny, easy, boy, easy. Well, look, he's trembling, lifting the air, looking at the sky. Don't you want to stay, Thunderhead? All right, boy. You can go. Free as the wind. Darn near as fast. Look at him, Dad. Straight for the mountains. I... I've lost him. Yes, dear. Mama, the albino is one at last. Goodbye, Thunderhead. Goodbye. stars will return for their curtain calls in just a moment. Do you remember those New Year's resolutions you made not so many weeks ago? Has something like this happened to them? One, go through closets for the clothing drive. Oh, I can't be bothered until I do my spring cleaning. But the need is now, Mrs. Smith. Let's see. Two, keep a can for used fat on the stove. Save some every day. Well, rationing's off, so... Saving used fat can't be very important now. Oh, yes, it's still very important if you want that new vacuum cleaner and radio and car, and especially if you want more soap. Supplies of industrial fats and oils are still far from enough to go around, and soap makers have to share the supply with thousands of other industries. So you can't have more soap unless there's more fat for industry. Manufacturers are depending on the housewives of America to help them get the fats they need to make the things you want. So, ladies, put that good resolution into action. Save every drop of used fat from table scraps, gravy, stews, frying pan, and broiler. Turn your full can of used fat into your dealer at once. He'll give you four cents for every pound. You'll be surprised how fast a container fills up. If you keep it in plain sight, add some every day. Remember, every time you throw used fats away, you're contributing to the soap shortage. 
If you want to see your favorite brands on the shelf more often, save used fats, turn them in regularly. Here's your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Our spotlight again falls on Rita Johnson, Roddy McDowell, and Preston Foster, who return for a well-deserved curtain call. Roddy, I understand you have your own producing company now. That's right, Mr. Keeley. But it's still on paper. But it's very real to me. Well, what do you call it, Roddy? Well, it's called Imperial Eagle Productions. I, I've given it about four square miles in the heart of Hollywood. You mean you have it all mapped out? Oh, certainly. With sound stages, administration buildings, dressing rooms, commissaries, cutting rooms. Hmm, must run into a lot of money, even on paper. Yes, Mr. Keeley, but of course we only make very successful pictures and with big stars. <laughs> well, who are some of the stars, Roddy? Well, Janet Ludlow is our Academy Award winner. Well, I'm afraid I've never heard of her. Well, I, I'm afraid she's still on paper. <laughs> but I've cast a lot of real stars in my pictures, too. I've even got Greta Garbo in production. Greta Garbo? Well, this sounds like a very interesting hobby. Where do you release your pictures, Roddy? I have my own chain of theaters, Mr. Keeley. Just the other day, Gregory Peck applied for the popcorn concession in them. <laughs> you don't have Preston Foster and Rita Johnson in production, do you? Yes, I do, sir. Preston and Rita, though you may not know it, they've been in production for the past four weeks on a picture called The World's Illusion. And who's the director? Well, uh... You are, Mr. Keeley. Oh, you know, I've been feeling a little bit worn out from pressure lately. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, Roddy, does this hobby of yours mean that you'd really like to produce pictures someday? I'd love it, Preston. Well, for a future producer, that's a very excellent hobby, Roddy. Maybe someday we'll be doing Imperial Legal screenplays here on Lux. What are you doing here next week, Doug, Jill? Well, next week we're bringing our audience Universal's tender and delightful screen hit, The Amazing Mrs. Holiday. And our welcome mat is out for three fine stars. Jean Tierney, Walter Brennan, and Edmund O'Brien. Jean plays one of the most touching roles I know, as the young girl posing as a rich man's widow to provide a home for eight war orphans. What happens when she discovers that the rich man has an attractive grandson of her own age? Well, um, uh, you'll find out when you tune in Monday. We'll certainly be with you in the audience. Good night. Good, Good night. night, and thanks for being with us. Our sponsor, the makers of Lux Flake, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Gene Tierney, Walter Brennan, and Edmund O'Brien in The Amazing Mrs. Holiday. This is William Keeley saying goodnight to you from Hollywood. drive against infantile paralysis, which has enlisted the aid of Hollywood studios and leading stars, the motion picture industry this year has collected and donated more than six million dollars. This is the greatest amount ever solicited by the industry in its annual campaign to help protect the children of America. Said the state chairman of the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, in expressing our gratitude for this fine contribution, I wish to add that it is in keeping with the generosity of your industry, which has always been among the strongest and most zealous supporters of the fight against infantile paralysis. Roddy McDowell appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of the psychological thriller, Shock. Preston Foster will soon be seen in the universal picture, Tangier. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear The Amazing Mrs. Holiday with Gene Tierney, Walter Brennan, and Edmund O'Brien. The Spry Treat of the Week. Crispy, tender-crusted fish fillets fried to full-flavored perfection in pure all-vegetable spry. For foods dependably delicious and digestible, rely on Spry. That's pure all-vegetable shortening at its creamy best. S-P-R-Y. Be sure to listen in next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of The Amazing Mrs. Holiday with Jean Tierney, Walter Brennan, and Edwin O'Brien. And why not tune in a half hour early to hear Joan Davis over most of these stations? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.